Silicon Alley tech boom is a fueling demand for high-end residential real estate. Our next guest is building a new 64-story luxury condominium tower in the Flatiron District. It will launch this fall, open two years later. Here is the initial layout of the design. You can see it there on the screens. Bruce Eigner is here. He's the founder and chairman of the Continuum Company. It is a privately held real estate development firm. Properties worth more than six billion dollars. Bruce, it's great to see you again. A pleasure. So that incredible looking tower that everybody just got to see as well in Flatiron, is this the hottest area in Manhattan right now? It is. Okay, and you're lucky enough to be developing this project. Tell us about it. Well, it's 770 feet tall. It's a cone Pedersen Fox design. It will contain approximately 83 apartments. It's on 22nd Street. Uh, between Park and Broadway. So did you have any pushback on zoning? Did you have to buy air rights? I mean, that's pretty tall for that area. It is a very unusual project, Deidre, because it was um, an assemblage of nine properties, air rights from eight of them, um, and it was, in a city in which this is unusual, a matter-of-right project. So how long did it take you to get all of those moving parts together, Bruce? Actually, it took me 10 months. Okay, actually, that's a lot faster than I thought you were going to say 10 years, but uh, 10 months sounds like pretty quick work, actually, for all those voices. Um, you know, you need a certain amount of luck in this business, and honestly, a little bit of luck involved here. In every single business, Bruce, as any successful person knows. But are you worried at all about being too exposed? And I ask developers who work in San Francisco the same thing. Is tech a one-trick pony? Well, I... I, I Number one, I don't think that the high-end real estate market is fueled by tech. I think it's fueled by the fact that from 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, there was nothing built, and everything that was built in 5, 6, and 7 was absorbed. But Bruce, let me ask you, I mean, for foreigners, do they even know Flatiron? I mean, for New Yorkers, we love it. That's a great neighborhood. But I always think that foreign money coming into the U.S., people who want to own a little apartment here, a little apartment that's worth a few million dollars here, other addresses are more famous. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think Flatiron is fueled by the foreign market. You'll get foreign buyers. The, one of the interesting statistics was 56 Leonard Street, which is downtown, um, ostensibly Tribeca. I mean, they had an entire foreign marketing uh, campaign which never went anywhere because it got sold out domestically before it ever hit the farm market. So all these stories that we're hearing that people, foreigners, want to own a New York City apartment because it is a kind of currency, if you like, if they're trying to just not pay taxes wherever they are, they want to have something here, you're saying, okay, that's all fine, that's well and good, but there's people here who want to own New York City real estate. Absolutely. I mean, look, um, 45 East 22nd Street, is likely to appeal to the planet because south of 42nd Street, it's going to have 360-degree views. And very much what sells today, people are interested in high-quality residential finishes. They're interested in views. They're interested in amenities. And they want to be near a park. So since you mentioned the views, are the top floors sold yet? Uh, then don't go on the market until September. All right. You'll have to tell us, you know, when they sell, what the price are. We want to know. Bruce, thank you in the meantime for the time. Great to see you here. A pleasure. Bruce Enjoy your Hecker. summer. Thank you.